Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for an episode of Reportage. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you through what I saw today at the 2017 Warhammer Fest event on the Saturday day of the show. This is a big event in the Warhammer calendar, the stuff to do with 40K, Age of Sigmar, and you've got stuff both from Games Workshop, Forge World, and other collaborating licensees. So for example, there's some people there from Sega to do with the with their computer games. Dawn of War 3, for example. So yeah, it's a big event. It's at the Rico Arena in Coventry. Two day event, as, as I said. I went on the first day of this event, which was a Saturday. An incredible show's been put on. You know, the great thing about these events is being able to go and see some incredible artwork, modeling, other creativity in, in the hobby on display. So, you know things like write, all the writers as well you get to meet members of games workshop forge world black library so on and so forth team and talk to them speak to them on a personal level and find something out about what's what they're doing in their particular part of the hobby and that's that's what i really enjoy about this a great show was put on this saturday i really enjoyed it it was a, it was a great day although very sadly um today's event has been overshadowed by very shocking piece of news um it certainly came as a shock to me it was announced at the Forge World Seminar that writer Alan Bly has very sadly passed away uh, yesterday um, following a period of illness and this has come as a as a complete shock and I think everyone was absolutely stunned and, and really terrible news and very sad for his, obviously his friends and family. I, I just know from meeting him at some of these game shows and also through his books and his work through Forge World but a, a really sad piece of news to receive. I'll just talk a little bit at the end of the video about you know some of my sort of thoughts about Alan Bly having met him a few times and you know my love of his work in the Horus Heresy. But nonetheless I think just as the guys at Forge World still put on a great seminar and show for us today you know I think um, let's uh, let's let me share my experiences of this really great day that a lot of people have put a great deal of hard work into. The doors opened at 10, I think we, I think me and my friend got there about an hour and a quarter early, so we set off really early this morning. I wanted to try beat the queue. And of course, the first thing to do upon getting in was get some loot, and I was very excited to get hold of one of these puppies. It's Legio Custodes Telemon Pattern Heavy Dreadnought. This miniature is on early release over the weekend. Really keen to get one for my, uh, what I call my small Custodes detachment. It's probably not quite so small as I might have initially planned, but hey ho. This is what I really wanted to get, and uh, I picked one up, so yeah, fantastic. And the retail price on these guys is going to be £72, and that £72 includes the arms. So about the same price as a Thanos. The exciting pre-release model was a Thunderhawk gunship, so the re-imaged Thunderhawk gunship. This has been redesigned by Darren Parwood, who sculpted, amongst other things, the Mars Pattern Warlord Titan for Forge World. So it um, seems like he's been given another big job to do. It's a fantastic new model of an iconic marine vehicle. And there's Milu. You get the Telemon body, and then I picked one of each arm as well to go with it. You can do two arms, two fists, or two guns. So it's, I think it's, it's a flexible chassis, but I went for one of each. The main hull, it was enormous and it was all decked out for gaming, be it Blood Bowl, 40K or Age of Sigmar. And I just tried to get a couple of photos before it all started to fill up of the sheer size of the gaming area. So it was enormous. And uh, yeah, there's, that's uh, looking down the, down the Blood Bowl tables there. So yeah, big old uh, setup. As I said at the start, there were some licensees there. There was also Dawn of War 3 represented as well. And someone had clearly been having a bit of fun and they built this incredible orc warrior uh, as a promo for dawn of war 3 and uh yeah amazing model there there was some weird and unusual stuff and this this guy here was certainly something i'd never expected to see this is a one fourth scale terminator model based on the graphical design from the deathwing computer game that was released last year and yeah awesome looking miniature they were taking pre-orders for these things. They're gonna be made by a company, I can't remember where it was now. It was somewhere in the USA, in the, in the States. And it's gonna weigh about six stone when fully built. And the retail price is $799. I don't know if that includes postage or not. 
but one quarter scale, one fourth scale, a, a, incredible model, absolutely amazing. And this has been done as like a licensed product. This isn't actually a Ford World model. So finally we found something that's bigger than, but a bit cheaper than a Warlord Titan. And I got a few shots just to show off the incredible detail on this simply amazing model. It was incredible. This is a part complete sculpt. It's not yet finished. And you can see that it's kind of like, they're still working on all the power cabling for the plasma cannon. And there's a close up of some of that detail. And you can see the helmet, the, uh, he's had a bit of a run in with a gene steel of some sort. It comes with a number of heads as well. And this, this head I think here was an exclusive head to pre-orders at Warhammer Fest. And there's an alternate head as well, like classic no marine helmet on, but with bionics as well. A really incredible model that. I think the Orc Warrior must have picked a fight with the wrong Space Marine because uh, its arm fell off and here we have a bunch of the Sega crew trying to uh, use a bit of duct tape, elastoplasts and safety pins to get it back on. They did eventually. Here's another model of the 1 4th scale Terminator and we've got the unhelmeted head on and you can see that there is a light up diode effect. This also works on the helmet as well. They're only going to make 500 of these apparently so um, that's what the guy said so uh, a bit of a limited run. And also the other thing is it is going to be supplied fully painted as well. So you won't get it as a resin kit like this. It's going to be ready to go. There were a number of events going on as a bit of a run up to release of 8th edition. One of them was you could test out 8th edition game and they also had some props at the, that someone's made. And here we have an excellent full size model of a, well, Hellblaster, but we all know what this really is. Come on guys, what, come on girls, what is this? This is a phased plasma rifle in the 40K range. That's right, one of the Primaris Space Marines weapons. Awesome, and there's a chainsaw as well, and fantastic model of a bolt rifle as well. If you wanted, you could go green screen, pose with one of these, and get your photo taken. So great fun. But brilliant models, they look absolutely fantastic. Sneaked a photo of a couple of the Primaris Space Marines. These are Inceptor Marines, these are from the demonstration games you could go along and play. But it, it turns out there were some much better painted examples on offer. These had just been done with some quick basic paint jobs as a bit of a test, so you could play with it and test. There was a Blight Drone also from a test game. They had a display out uh, showing you the sprues for 8th edition box set and there's the rule book as well. I found out a bit more about the Primaris Space Marine models. The Primaris Space Marines are all going to be single pose so they're going to go together in, in set poses and not multi-pose models. See what you get, uh, all look very good. There's the back of the 8th edition box and some of the, accept these are the two mini indexes you get, the um, range measurer, and, uh, some transfers and the core rules. And there are copies of the index books or the indices. We're debating all day as to what to call these. You can't call them indexes, indices, I think. They're going to be released for the 41st millennium races. So the next thing we did is we went to a seminar. And there are a number of seminars running through the day. We only got time to go into two. The seminars were 45 minutes long, but to be honest, with everything else that was to look around, that was, you know, that we had a really full day. But one of them we went to was with Ali Morrison and Max Dean. Pastorel. This presentation was them talking through their design ideas and philosophy around the Nurgle and Death Guard miniatures for the new Dark Imperium box set for 8th edition. Yep, so there's Maxime Pastorel and there's GW veteran Ali Morrison. They talked about the Plague Marines first. There's a John Blanche original sketch and then these are some concept art they developed from it. This was some of their Nurgle forces that they'd had and you can see how you've got a variety of existing Chaos models that they've adapted um, to Nurgle. They were talking about what they drew inspiration from for when they designed the 8th edition models. That's a rather out of focus picture of one of the Death Guard Marines. The pictures of, uh, of the Death Guard miniatures from the box set. It was interesting listening to Ali Morrison talk about these and he, he explained his reasoning behind all these spiky bits and he's based them on what's called the zombie ant uh, and it's the idea of this contagion growing and them being possessed by things. So yeah, but they're really good looking set of models and some really cool nods to various designs of Nurgle Plague Marines and other Nurgle factions that have gone, come over the years. And here we have the, some concept design work on the new Blight Drone, which was um, Maxime Pastorel's work, I believe. And there we have the leader of the Plague Marine Force, the Lord of Contagion. And some of the models and art that inspired him. This is a 
uh, a well-known fancy metal miniature. And there's the finished article, The Lord of Contagion. This is uh, moving on to the Herald, the Plague Marine Herald. As Alan Morrison demonstrating, you go a bit of that and then a bit of that. And then you've got some Plague Marines. Uh, I think it was more complex than that. Uh, and there's a Noxious Blightbringer completed. And here we have the Sorcerer of Nurgle, um, the Malignant Plague Caster. And it was interesting he hearing them talk about what they were trying to do here. And they, what they're trying to do is create this person as if this Nurglesque Sorcerer, as if they were blowing the contagion off their hand into this cloud of feated vapour. Then Ali Morrison talked about the Poxwalkers and again and even more strongly here we get the zombie ant theme and that's why he's got all this spikes and distorted nature. I mean if you look up zombie ants you will understand uh, what his inspiration was. It was interesting to hear that because I'd been a little bit puzzled by these spikes but having listened to this presentation where he dis where he took us through his inspiration it made more sense and he was saying how he liked the crazy smiles on these guys as well. This guy here you've funnily got Here's a gun barrel, here's the remains of the las gun, and, and he's actually strapped this blade onto what used to be the shoulder stock, so it's kind of like back to front being used as a as a, as a blade. He liked the crazy smiles. So there's lo that's why there's lots of crazy smiles on these guys. Apparently they're insanely happy. And here he talked about various, how these pox walkers are supposed to be representing all sorts of different walks of civilian life. So this guy here was a doctor, this is someone in a hazmat suit. There's a soldier here. And yeah, it's just really interesting listening to him as to his his ideas. And he was saying how this one here has got an artificial art. It's completely untainted. It's only it's all the flesh parts of these pox walkers that have become tainted. It's just one of the bits of, uh, that's kind of like a closing shot. That's one of the bits of art that they're using around 8th edition. So then moving on um, to kind of like one of the display areas and this is now several slides of Primaris Space Marine porn. So if you're not interested in Primaris Space Marines, I do apologize. They put this ultimately in alongside some Black Templars to give a size comparison. There's an Inceptor Orbital Drop Trooper. Obviously they're mounted on a flying stand but they're still big dudes and their armor is even bulkier than the normal Marines. And there's a rear view of him as well. I've, I've got to admit, having seen these miniatures now, I'm a bit more fond, I'm, I don't mind these boots. Having seen them from all angles, they look better actually. So I'm, uh, I'm on board with those now. The selection of Pox Walkers and the other miniatures from the eighth edition starter set from the Nurglass Cords. There's a few others that have sneaked in like this uh, Hellbrute Dreadnought thing isn't in it. And there's another one of the delightful Blight Drones. These look just great, these Blight Drones are really cool. More Nurgless guys, there's a Lord of Contagion, some Pox Walkers, and now we move on to some Primaris Space Marines. And here we start with some Ultramarines. There we've got the Lieutenant or Lieutenant um, with the Box Mag Bolt Rifle, and alongside the Captain in the Gravis Power Armor. The Lord of Contagion shot. Not all these photos are necessarily in the right order, but you know, please <laughs> just stick with me. Uh, more Ultramarine Primaris Marines, looking very Gucci. These guys were a really great models and I got a chance to handle them. They're, they're really, not these ones, but some other ones are really good looking. Uh, a random shot of the stu or one of the Studio Rebooté Guillemins from 40k, looking pretty awesome. And now for other chapter fans from Warhammer 40,000. You'll be pleased to know that they have not just got some Ultramarines in the Primaris setup. We have a few other chapters represented. So firstly we have Dawn's Finest, the Imperial Fists. These guys will look, look great. Yeah, really, the, the Primaris Space Marines do look great. And there you get a bit of a size comparison between a, a Primaris Sergeant and uh, a current Astartes model. Fans of Sanguinius, will, I'm sure you'll appreciate these Blood Angel Primaris, look really good. Yeah, I mean, these guys look, they're, yeah, they're awesome in Blood Angel colours. 
and then the Dark Angels as well. Looking at almost tactical in the green. The final part of this display was sponsored by PETA and here we have a selection of Space Wolf Fur Free Primaris Space Marines. I'm only joking, of course PETA had nothing to do with this. But yeah, but the Space Wolves look great and I've got to admit, without all the furriness you usually get with Space Wolves, these guys gave me a bit of a nostalgia flashback to what the Space Wolves were like back when I was young and I first started playing and the Space Wolves were the first chapter I ever collected. It was nice to see these, uh, these guys and have that little uh, nod to the earlier part of the game on the part of um, the painters here. They look, again, the Primaris Marines look brilliant. I'll talk about them in a bit more detail later. I really like this guy. We have a member of the Crimson Fist chapter, a Primaris Space Marine with a bolt rifle. Uh, a little bit of Zinch craziness. So we've got a Lord of Change. And then we've got Magnus the Red in his Demon Prince form. You know, and here he is with his uh, this incredible, his chesticle holder uh, and his awesome wings and uh, another denomic wackiness. Absolutely out outrageously crazy model that. And some Thousand Sons Terminators as well. They'd really gone to town on the 8th edition Plague Marine models. There's some more. You know, I said I liked the Crimson Fist in Primaris Armour. Well, I really liked him and I took another photo. Okay, I'd tell like, I, had to I had to take another photo as well. That's how much I liked him. Okay, I took another photo as well. I really, really liked this guy. Uh, in the Crimson Fist colours. Here we've got a picture of the re-imaged Thunderhawk gunship. So this is priced at £450, so a bit more expensive than the outgoing model. Parwood has done a great job with this and while keeping it faithful to the classic Thunderhawk, he's added some redesign cues that really bring it on nicely. I mean the new canards look good, the uh, angled sides of the hull give it a bit more of a streamlined shape. The whole cockpit area is much more in profile with the fuselage than it used to be. I like how these wings pose like that. I don't know if they've always been able to do that, but I think it looks brilliant with this almost X-wing like wing configuration. It's a brilliant looking model. It really is it's great. There's a photo of it from an alternate angle as well. Some more photos of the Thunderhawk later on. So uh, if you like the Thunderhawk, uh, there's more to come. There was a very nice diorama of Rubute Guilliman and some custodian guards. I like how the modeler here has re-sculpted this really well. I mean, this is creating a scene from A Gathering Storm 3. Looks very, look really good. Goes to show how you can, you know, the sort of neat poses and effects you can get with the plastic Games Workshop Rubute Guilliman model. This was a diorama, models from the 8th edition box set. So we've got primary space marines of various types. So we've got um, intercessor squads here, and we've got uh, an inceptor squad here, and some pox walkers and plague marines doing their stuff. A little bit of a something different. I just, this just I just saw this and uh, I really liked it, so I snapped a show, photo of it. Uh, it's the Caradron Lords a diorama set in the clouds and. Uh, the, the modeler here has used all this cotton wool to excellent effect to create this brilliant looking set piece. It's like, uh, I always like Games Workshop to stay true to its roots and have this enormous sort of like seven foot tall panel art of the original John Sibic Rogue Trader artwork. So I thought, yeah, very nice. I'll have a photo of that. And then there was there's a couple of photos here. As, as, you, as we're getting more and more at these open days, they like to have a little nostalgia piece on show and it is really good to see models from the early days. And we've got some, uh, some very early Ultramarines I remember from pre-100 White Dwarves I remember seeing these in. Then we've got the RTB-01 plastic box set as well. First plastic Space Marines and there's a little zoom in. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that they've kept these models from all those years ago. You know, 30 years ago they've still got them. A few other oddities, Space Zotes, these by Andy Hoare, so early Tyranid swarm type units, and some Slan as well. There's one model I didn't see here, and I don't know if they had it. I believe they might not have it here because they never. I don't think they ever released it. There was a Tyranid model based on the original artwork from Rogue Trader, and from what I've read, apparently only a few dozen examples uh, exist, and I don't think they were ever released, but I wonder if anyone, if they've still got one in their collection, it's something they might add to this just for nostalgia value. Base it vanished from 40k. 
and a real nostalgia trip for me the original Adeptus Titanicus game so the where the origins of a Titan and line and indeed first time we got to play out on tabletop part of the Horus Heresy um, because prior to this although this was around at the same sort of time as Slaves to Darkness the Slaves to Darkness dealt with the uh, the traitor legions in the 41st millennium just titanicus was set at the time of the horus heresy so yeah first bit of horus heresy gaming there i had that when i was young it was a brilliant game i loved it ah primaris space marine so this was a stand where jez goodwin was chatting to people about the primaris space marines and i had a really good discussion with jez goodwin asking him all about the primaris marines and how we went about designing them what his influences were and, and why you did them this way and it was a really interesting discussion and fascinating to kind of understand and he shared a lot of information around his ideas and it was really interesting talking to him i mean if you ever get if you ever do get a chance to go to one of these events you know if he's uh seek him out because jez goodwin is a great guy to talk to he's been there from such early times and has had such a huge impact on the look of the game and of course the iconic space marines i found it really interesting in particular i did it was fascinating talking to him about what his ideas were he said was with the he, he was asked to refresh the space marine range and so what he did was he created units that fulfilled roles that space marines don't currently have in their force now so uh, you know i think the intercessor squads are the tough tactical marines but they but they're well suited to long range rifle fire and they've all got bolters so they've all got the same sort of weapon quite heresy style and the Inceptor squad basically said, well, I've done these as orbital drop troopers and they've got this heavier armour, this Gravis armour with these inbuilt jetpacks and control vanes uh, and they're armed with these assault bolters. So the assault bolters are like snub-nosed heavy bolters are incredible weapons. These to me look like the mobile infantry of Starship Troops and they said, yes, that's, that's what we're like. That's 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 a good comparison. Words to that effect. So yeah, very interesting to understand that. And I, I get, although I've not seen the rules yet, I'm guessing the hell blasters are, for, are following. I forgot to say then, phased plasma rifles in the 40k range. He let me handle and look at some of these models. I had a chance to to look at them up close properly from all angles for the first time. And I must say, these are absolutely fantastic models. I will definitely be buying myself a copy of Dark Imperium just for these Primaris Marines. Um, if you like Space Marines, these guys, I, I've, they're great. The increase in size has really led to an uplift in the detail. And there's all sorts of nice design cues in there. I was asking him about what his inspiration was for his design cues. And, you know, there was a Mark 8 sketch, as I thought was the case uh, from the late, from the early 90s was one of the things. And then the other thing he said was Mark IV Powered Armour. He said, well... Uh, the reason I used Mark IV and the helmets are very Mark IV style, but so the reason I used Mark IV is in the fluff. It's a, it was actually supposed to be the ultimate and most sophisticated form of powered armor. It just got knocked out of general use by the Horus Heresy. So I thought that was a, an interesting link into the fluff. Really interesting. And yeah, fantastic models, all of them. And oh gosh, another Blight Drone. They keep cropping up everywhere, these things do. And some Plague Brains. And a Lord of Contagion. This was on the way to the Forge World seminar and the Forgeal seminar the theme was well you know what they're doing what they got planned and all that sort of stuff it was presented by tony cottrell i mean i've been to a few of these and it's, it's normally tony cottrell um who presents and i, I thought it was a very he, he did actually at the start of the, before he started giving the presentation he did actually share the news that alan Bly had uh, died yesterday which was it was obviously a, a real shock to hear, but I thought it was also very respectful of him, as, of him as well to let all the fans know about what had happened. You know, he then went on and gave a really good presentation, and you know, it was a it was a, a lot of fun to listen to as always. So, so firstly was Imperial Armor Eighth Edition, and uh, these are the indexes for Forty First Millennium play for Forty K, fifteen quid a go, and there's going to be four books covering. Uh, forces of Chaos, Index Forces of the Adeptus Astartes, Index Forces of the Astra Militarum, and Index Xenos. I'll, I'll flick through these quickly. Um, I apologise for the cat for the heads in the foreground. So sorry for taking photos of whoever these heads were. It was just it was the best angle I could get without obstructing other people's views from where I sat. So uh, apologies for the heads. There's the Forces of Chaos Index, 
Then there's the Adeptus Astartes index, which will have all the four drilled um, Adeptus Astartes in. Oh, the, they said they've included everything that they've done, stuff they've not, e the stuff they never even produced models for, but did rules for, and even some really and out of production models as well. So it sounds as if they've really tried to capture the full gamut of everything Forge World has done, even some of the oddities. So if anyone's ever heard of the Landraider Ares, which was a scratch build kit that they did rules for. So you needed like a Landraider and a Vindicator and some modeling skills to build it. I expect they'll probably have the data sheet in here for that, even models like that. And things like the Thunderhawk Transporter, which is presently out of production. Although um, he, we, he did actually say that while it's out of production at the moment, it is something that they would like to bring back in the future. Although they won't re, he doesn't think they'll redesign it as the main Thunderhawk gunship was, but he certainly wasn't saying it'll never come back. So that was interesting to hear. Uh, the next is Index Forces of the Astra Militarum. So this has got uh, the Guard, Renegades, and of course, the Imperial Battle Titan. So uh, these are 15 quid ago, they've got all the data sheets in. I'll definitely get this one, and, and I'm gonna pick up the Adeptus Astartes one as well. Um, so I think there'll be enough in there, and a bit of rules proxying to start work, doing some test games in 8th um, for Heresy. The Xenos, so this had the Eldar, the Tau, the Necrons, the Tyrannies, etc. All those nice juicy battle suits and Eldar Phantom Titans. He touched a bit on the Imperial Armour book, The Fires of Cyraxus. I think this has been delayed because of obviously the events around uh, Alan Bly. This has been on the table for a while, but they've still got it as an active project. Here, as, he, as Tony Cottrell said, was a Port Talbot view with the uh, Skitari on the move. A little bit of um, Ordinatus Minoris Sagittarum last cannon fire, or volcano cannon fire, should I say? A bit of Tau goodness with some fancy battle suits. And then we have an Imperial Knight, so Serastus Knight. And we're going to see Battle Automata make an appearance in the 41st millennium. That's going to be fascinating. And that'll be a useful little insight as well, again, um, to see what. Kind of like to get some 8th edition versions of um, Forge World units. He, he talked a bit about the reimaged Thunderhawk. They're doing a model of Gabriel Angelos, master of the chapter master of the Blood Ravens. So this is kind of like a Dawn of War 3 promotion. This is going to be re released early. Nobody asked if he can jump. He's a you know, neat looking model, I'm sure uh, some people appreciate him. There's a new Tau Tiger Shark. So this is a redesign of an, of an old model being redesigned to, as a to go together better as a kit and they've added options into uh, give greater weapon fit selections and same on this tiger shark oh moving on to what's next for the horus heresy so this is a big deal a big topic and everyone of course was waiting with bated breath about what the news was going to be for eighth edition you know are they planning to move um, there was a particularly delicious looking Blood Angels Legion transfer sheet. So, you know, how to look like you are an incredible painter. If you're not anyway, and even if you are, these are brilliant to put on your Blood Angels war machines. Some of the new Thousand Suns Skirmit Terminators. Some more Thousand Suns Terminators. Magistus Amon of the Thousand Suns Legion. He is a unique character from Book 7 Inferno. This is a Thousand Suns Praetor miniature in Cataphractic Terminator armor. That looked really good. And Stuart Williamson has been busy. And we have a variety of new weapon options for the Sikaran battle tank. Firstly up is a Punisher cannon, so lots of DACA. Next up is, I can't remember what this is called, but it's basically a twin plasma cannon of ultimate death. So perhaps what happens if you take the sort of weapon on a Deradio Dreadnought the Hellfire Plasma Carronade and scale it up to a tank size weapon system. Uh, and then finally, at the end of all that is holy for Space Marine Infantry, what looks like a whirlwind Scorpius turret fit for the Sakaran battle tank, a runaway that is going to be absolutely terrifying. The Caron Pattern Acquisitor, Sisters of Silence dedicated transports from the Heresy Towns of the Emperor Force. Very neat looking vehicle. Note Iron Maiden, prisoner holders. Fascinating looking vehicle. E, oh, this is, I can't remember. Is this a Pursuit Cardra from Sisters of Silence? So this is going to be a conversion kit for Plastic Sisters of Silence, which gives them a pair of bolt pistols. So they look really Gucci, very nice. There's the Telemon 
Custodes Heavy Dreadnought again, compared against a Contempt Galatus. Uh, Tony Cottrell said he quite, he quite wants to change the art. So this guy's holding his hand and uh, I think that's quite, that'd be quite nice, make a nice little diorama. It's a little bit late with this photo. These are some models by Will Hayes. This is a picture of the Aquilon Terminators for the Legio Custodes. And they, these were the dudes and I just sort of miss them as it transitioned to this guy. And this is kind of like a, um, this one's got a twin linked Adrathic Destructor. Looks very nice in there. I think a solar goal, a solar right gauntlet, perhaps. These two are awesome. Um, these got fire pikes. These it looks so much like the art from the Heresy card game. Just great looking. I love those models. How about this then? Uh, this is not the Nostromo from the film Alien. This is a Custodes gunship. So yeah, fascinating. I'm not sure if this is going to have any transport capacity or if it's all just going to be shooting. So we we have what looks like a pair of arachnus blaze cannons of some sort and some lastrum bolt cannons of some variety yeah so the custodians are going to be bringing flying death soon as well as the ground born death uh, whoopee say the traitors right now the next thing is a big deal it was good to have forgeable people address the question on everyone's lips about the horus heresy and seventh edition the decision that they've made at the moment is to stick with the seventh edition rules i think the view is or my view is, is obviously things have got very disrupted um, with recent events and i think they've decided rather than trying to rush and make a mess of doing a, a revision to eighth they're going to consolidate the seventh rule book into a heresy version. That's what we can see in front of us. And this is a new book they're going to release. And for the, well, certainly the immediate future, they're going to keep the heresy in the seventh edition rule set. So I guess that's, that will certainly please some people. Probably not a bad thing. And I think it's a very pragmatic um, decision based on the events that have happened. There's a bit of my finger, if you like, you know, bad photos. Memory of what's in it. slightly better photo of what's in it and if you want to read through that uh, just have a pause and read through that we had some information on book eight angelus next black book which they are working on so what's in the book so we get blood angels and dark angels nearly bringing us to all of the loyalist legions covered in detail We've got several events uh, you can obviously see those there including uh, well-known like the Siege of Baal and Cygnus Prime. Then we also get the Dark Mechanicum as well and the introduction of demons and diabolism in the Horus Heresy. So yeah, it could be interesting. And uh, I think the dark, obviously the Dark Angels and Blood Angels fans will be delighted about that. A few nice uh, Dark Angels there looking quite ferocious. Timeline of where this book fits in. So this bar down the right-hand side represents the Siege of Terror. So we can see that the events dealt with in this book cover the complete timeline of the Horus Heresy from year of Isfan 3 and the destruction of Prospero and the Martian Civil War all the way through until the beginning of the Siege of Terror. They didn't have a picture of an upcoming Primarch for us this time but what they did have was a CAD render of the work that's been done so far on the leader of the Legio Custodes, Constantin Valdor. So he looks uh, suitably stern-faced and uh, imposing there. Very cool. That was the end of the Forge World presentation. Uh, when the, then uh, when I had a look around the Forge World display area, that's Smaug, which I, I've not seen Smaug for a while before. That's a very impressive model, that from the Lord of the Rings range. Got lots of nice vehicles from various members of the studio. So these are Emperor's Children and some Andy, I think those are, these are Andy Hall's collection. These are some White Scars and some more Empress Children, all looking very good. That's a, a comp, what you, get, what you get when you combine parts from a number of different Serastus Knights. So you've got the mechanic and body, you've got the arms um, from the Castigator. No, not the Castigator, not the Lancer. Hmm. I can't remember now. Pri a, a prize for the pers first person in the comments to remind me which Imperial Knight has got the flame cannon on. And then they've added one of the alternate heads. So that looked really good, actually. That's Darren Parwood there, the, uh, the the brains behind the Warlord Titan and the re-sculpted Thunderhawk gunship. Emma Ayres is one of the 
staff writers at Forge World, so we had a bit of a chat with her about the current rules situation. They've got a big task ahead and they're working on book eight and they've got to kind of reforge the direction of what they do. Moving on to the section, I think, with Will Hayes. And here we have a couple of the new custodian super dreadnoughts. You can have two hands or two guns, so you can, you can mix and match your weapon arms. Some very nicely painted versions. Like they might be on Martian soil, perhaps, I'm not sure. There is a painted Caron Pattern Acquisitor with its two alternate front ends. And that as well, with uh, this nice Irish like um, door or suction thing. That makes me think of the duct doors from the film Alien. You might get the idea that I like the Caron Pattern Acquisitor. I keep taking photos of it. Yeah, I had a really good chat with Will Hayes. Uh, Will Hayes is a Dreadnought man, so he's done. Contempt of Dreadnought, the Leviathan Dreadnought, the Custodian Dreadnoughts, and now the Telamon Dreadnought. Um, I had an interesting chat with him, and, and he brought up the subject of the original Space Marine Dreadnoughts from the Rogue Trader era, and he was saying how it would be great to get those back into the model range somehow, and we were having some debate about how to do it. You can do that, that would be great to see those original Bob Naismith Dreadnoughts or something based on them make a reappearance. He also did uh, the robots as well, so the mechanic and robots like the Thanatar and the Castellaxes. Really enthusiastic guy. Now this is Mark Bedford's collection and these are his Iron Hands. He's got a brilliant Iron Hands forces built. Mark Bedford's one of their studio artists. He painted oh, he's painted loads of stuff but uh, if you've seen the Mechanicum House Malinax Battle Automata and Knights, he painted those, so that's the ones in the bone and the metal colour. Uh, but he'd done this Force of Iron Hands as well, and he, um, I had a good chat with him about um, how he painted them, and I've got a great idea about how I'm going to paint my Iron Hands Legion. The colour ba balance on the camera here hasn't carried it through, but this actually had a really nice blue tinge to it. This fell blade looked really cool. Minotaur vehicles, some Imperial Fists, looking ace and an Imperial Fist Falchion, very impressive looking vehicle. I had a chance to talk with Stuart Williamson, so Stuart Williamson has done a lot of my favourite Forge World kits, done the Mechanicum tanks, he did the Fellblade tanks, he did the Sakarans, and then he's also done the Caron Pattern Acquisitor as well. Uh, so yeah, a few more photos. If you've not already had enough photos of the Caron Acquisitor, I was chatting with him about his, uh, his inspirations and he was talking about 1950s aircraft for flush riveted design the nautilus some dune influence as well yeah very uh, yeah fascinating vehicle we'll try to stop having photos of caron i think that you'll be relieved to hear i think that was the last photo of the caron pattern acquisitor uh here we've got the studio thunderhawk re-imaged gunship model very impressive looking great kit some tyrant siege terminators some cataphracty terminators very nice. I'm sure Iron Warrior players will be delighted to finally get those guys. Uh, and then the final guy I chatted with is Simon Egan. And this this is a guy who's given us the Primarchs. And, and he was showcasing his most recent work, the dual, the two Primarchs, uh, Lehman Russ and Magnus the Red, and their dual. The really nice looking models, those. And he was a really interesting guy to chat with. I've chatted with him a few times, and it's it's really interesting speaking to him about how he sculpts the Primarchs and a lot of the sculpting team are now um, working on computer design and now using computer based design to sculpt their models even you know very complex ones um, but, but Simon Egan still sculpting these shall we say the old-fashioned way by hand which is quite interesting to hear on these very intricate Primarch models the next Primarch he's working on is Rogal Dawn. So there you go, we're finally going to get the Dawninator. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed that little bit of insight into what I found at the Warhammer Fest 2017 Saturday event. It was a brilliant day, I, I, I had a fantastic time, we got there for doors open, I think we only just left about quarter to five so it was a it was a really full day, very busy. I had a really great time, loads of stuff, talked to loads of really interesting people, found out a lot about what's coming up. Really great event. However, I will just finish by reflecting on, while the day gave us so much, we also, there was something that was not there and there was something that was missing from the day. And of course, 
that was Alan Bly, you know, the, 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 the guy who wrote and gave us the Horus Heresy series more than any other one person. You know, he wrote, he started writing those black books and I, I think, you know, I don't think anyone would dispute or argue that from a point of view of the law and the game that the Horus Heresy was, you know, it was his brainchild and he was a person that gave it to us and uh, and what a great time, you know, what a great thing he's given us uh, for the hobby and, you know, and it's, it's, it's very, it's so sad to hear of his passing away yesterday. I'd met and spoken to him at a few events, be it Horus Heresy Weekenders, New Year's Open Days and, and etc. And I always enjoyed talking to him. He was always very willing to share his ideas, answer your questions and, uh, and, and, and have a bit of a rules debate as well. You know, he was, he was always ready to do that. Always a pleasure to see him and talk to him. And the last time I saw him, I think, was at the November Warhammer 40,000 day at Warhammer World. And I spoke to, and I did speak to him then, and, I, and, I, and he talked to me about the Cyraxus book that he was working on at the time. If you'd like to share a thought about Alan Bly, do so in the comments. I know they had a book of condolence that they were had open at the at the weekend. I don't know if that's going to appear at Warhammer World or anything. But yeah, if you've got some memory, perhaps of Alan Bly, share it in the comments. Rest in peace, Alan Bly. You'll be greatly missed.